morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Again, Michelle Klein here, responsible for the Aviva Unified Operations Center, which is our industry solution portfolio, which includes um, the which includes offers for uh, specifically for infrastructure and also in oil and gas. So if you've been seeing this morning and all this morning, you've seen that Aviva has an entire suite of software offerings for engineering operations and performance. You know, technology during the design and engineering phase for operations, production, maintenance, simulation, and then full value chain optimization. So we have everything for, you know, everything in technology for the edge to the enterprise. And Scott was just presenting that edge piece. But today what I I'll focus on is I'll focus on our solution offer for multiple sites and enterprise, you know, solutions. So in a nutshell, the Unified Operations Center is Aviva's productized, commercialized solution to create integrated control rooms or intelligent operations centers or centers of excellence or common control rooms. Many of you call it many different things, you know, but at its core, the UOC is a solution offer and a foundational technology that's based upon a system of systems approach which is intended to converge OT and IT technologies into a single application, into a single pain solution that's contextualized. Again, it's based on a systems of systems approach and it allows for plug-in and integration of different types of application and data from things that are not necessarily what you would see coming from operations. So integration maybe with map systems, with CCTV videos, um, with, you know, ERP or HR systems, things on the engineering and design side. So providing this to, you know, our customers with out of the box industry solution templates, reports, dashboards, and operational KPIs. So that's EOC in a very, very large nutshell. It's offered again for infrastructure and for oil and gas and for infrastructure that covers facilities and building management, data centers, uh, water wastewater, innovative and smart cities, transportation, which includes uh, airports, and then for oil and gas, of course, upstream, midstream, and downstream. Okay. So in general, we were seeing still, even in today's, you know, affected market, you know, there are many drivers why, you know, our customers are looking for more of this, you know, enterprise, you know, en an enterprise solution and looking for this more of a converge or technology platform. You know, on one hand, you have all the existing market conditions, which we know very, very well, in general, you're trying to reduce, you know, your operations costs, your maintenance costs, you're trying to stay in compliance, you're trying to digitize, you know, the way that you do your day to day operations, you need access to more information, you know, you have some internal initiatives to take advantage of key technologies such as, you know, IoT and, you know, MQTT and cloud and those other things that also Scott mentioned as well, you know, things maybe you're hearing the term digital twin and maybe even already in your organization, there's a, some talk about artificial intelligence or machine learning. But at, ultimately at the end of the day, your organizations, whether or not you're for profit or not for profit because you're part of a municipality or public, you know, utility, you're still trying to, you know, reduce your risk, improve your, reduce your risk improve your uh, efficiency and you know provide visibility and remote access again you know even in today's market you know what we're seeing is that you know our customers again whether or not they're for profit or not are really refocusing their resources and investments still on digital transformation but instead of say now targeting you know more towards growth and expansion they're targeting towards ensuring safety ensuring support for remote activities, ensuring continued operations, and really the executive stakeholders, whether or not, you know, that's your directors or supervisors or general managers of your, you know, municipalities, you know, those people are trying to, at that higher level, really trying to get access to data, study this data in these conditions, and then make decisions that affect, you know, operations and business. And they're looking for enterprise-wide visibility, the ability to provide connectivity, rem especially remote connectivity these, day these days, you know, to operations and help, help operations by giving them guidance, making their jobs and their workloads more efficient, and, you know, and really providing that type of platform which can help improve collaboration. So that which brings us to, you know, the Unified Operations Center. So at the end of the day, if you were to take apart the Unified Operations Center and say, you know, what is it really? 
at its core, it consists of our own Aviva software and our technologies, right? And it consists of libraries of templates that represent physical or software assets. It has graphics, tools, apps, and all of these things are pre-assembled together with configuration and scripting into a starter application. The execution of something that is a unified operation center or that command and control room can be very, very complex. And providing an industry-specific starting point you know, helps our customers reduce the complexity during the engineering development and those continued maintenance and growth and expansion stages. So again, we start off with our own core technology that has libraries, templates, and the ability to connect to, of course, as we always do, to end hardware devices, but also to connect to other software systems, bring all that information together, whether or not it's an Aviva software product or a third-party application, bring that together with templates, graphics, and other tools, do the pre-configuration and the scripting necessary to make those pieces work together so that you have some starting point in order to create your own command and control room or unified operation center. But what's unique about this is that, you know, at most times you already have some sort of real-time operational display or what you would call a SCADA system. And at some point in time, you know, you need to integrate information from other systems that are not part of the SCADA system. So example, PNID diagrams, 1D, 2D, or 3D modeling, you know, information that even are coming from the engineering design stage. You may want to even have access to as built at the time that maybe your site was commissioned or maybe pump curves and things like that that came from the vendor and manufacturer and access that in real time, read your real time SCADA information. You also may wanna bring in information related to power monitoring control, things from power meters and energy management. But think about also not from energy consumption, not just from the point of kilowatt hour, but what is the cost of that? So again, drawing in information from the existing systems that you already have in place, or you need a software technology there from Avivo to pull that information out, right? And then bringing in information from say, either asset management systems that either come from Aviva or maybe you have your own third party CMMS systems such as Maximo. You have other information coming from other process engineering integration softwares. And you also have information coming in of course from your revenue systems. Maybe you have SAP and Oracle. Maybe you have other information you know, related to assets, you know, in the form of maintenance data, metadata, so as for example, you know, the vendor, the time that, you know, a piece of equipment was installed, the last time that it was main, you know, did its uh, maintenance. Again, you know, this is the unified operation center is a system as a systems approach that takes information from other data silos and other disparate systems, such as these systems here, and converges them together into a single pane application so that the information can be displayed in, con in context, but not only for the display purposes, but also for command and control. So let's say you integrate in here your Maximo or some other asset management uh, software here. It's not just a display, maybe just the last you know, couple work orders you know, for a particular you know, process or a particular um, you know, instrument or a piece of equipment. But say you want to trigger the workflow from here as well and allows you the capability to do that. So again, you know, bringing all this information supports that real-time decision support. You may have, say, you know, KPIs that usually you only see maybe at the end of the month or in the quarter, things that usually come at, like, uh, at reports that are generated much later on. But you now bringing all the information together helps you develop you know, real-time KPIs. And then that drives you know, your operational performance because you can see in real time whether or not your operations is tracking towards not only your operational, you know, your operational metrics, but also your business metrics as well. So you increase this efficiency, you know, by converging these applications together because you're streamlining your workflows. Again, just as an example for um, creating a work order, how many different applications do you need to use today, you know, to, to lock out or tag out a piece of equipment that requires maintenance or requires some repair? You know, think about that. It's not just a system, say, to converge software data silos together. It's also a system to converge together, you know, many different sites or many different processes. So you can have multiple sites. So think about yourself if you're a water district, you have sites that are coming from your source water, sites that are coming from your distribution, you know, distribution side, some sites that are coming from plants that are from your water treatment side, you know, but all together you are one, you know, municipality or one utility 
bringing that all into a regional view. Or say, for example, you're a manufacturer, you know, you're a food and beverage company, or you're a, another infrastructure, you're a city, and you're bringing in all disparate systems that maybe are coming from different departments, the silos, public works and public utilities, or the city's help desk system. And again, bringing that, all of that information from many different sites, many different systems, whether or not they're physical assets or their software assets, their data silos, it's an Azure data lake, it's another different type of SCADA system, or it's many, many different, you know, regional sites or remote sites, bringing that information together into a single pane solution. And key to that is bringing that information together in context. There's a lot of different technology out there, you know, to grab all the data and basically throw it into a data basket or a data lake, but the information is not yet in context. There's no relationship between the data until you manually give that relationship by generating elaborate dashboards and things like that or massaging the data. So what the unified operations as it does provide the ability to contextualize the data, normalize the data, standardize the data and also provide in such a way from the OMI technology to take this information, display it in those very, very large control rooms that you see with ADNOC or get that information into the hands of a field operator or remote worker on their tablet or their mobile device. So out of the box, it gives you those connectors, connectors not just for the OT side, which you know we always have done for you know, 30 years now, connecting to instruments and equipment down to PLCs, RTUs, DCS systems, smart transmitted devices, things on building management systems, DDCs, but now connectors to more of the IT and the business application side, connectors for SAP, Oracle, Azure Data Lake, Amazon Web Services, you know, S3 storage. You know, think about those other things that have, you know, or other internets of things or other business applications that have data that's relevant to operations that you want to bring in to the same system. So why is this maybe, you know, what's making us a little bit uh, unique, you know, again, you do, I mean, even at this point, I mean, there's, uh, you know, Cisco and Deloitte, you know, have, have an offer that looks very similar to this, or, you know, what, what about, you know, a, a data lake? Why can't we just do that? You know, put every put all the data into one you know one data basket. So what we're seeing is that you know in major players in this space where you're converging you know data together from multiple systems or multiple sites, right? That there's two types of companies. There are either the companies that are IT companies, maybe people like Cisco, or maybe there's OT companies, maybe people that are you know people that are like uh, people that are like Schneider Electric. So when they're specialized in IT. The solution, of course, does well with aggregating data into that data lake or that data basket for dashboarding, you know, but, but then it ends there, right? Because Aviva's ULC converges and contextualizes the data from the same solution, though, from the exact same solution, users can perform, you know, command and control to equipment processes and other IT type systems, such as those work order systems, right? So that's, a, that's definitely different, the ability to see the data, monitor the data, but also still take command and control from the same application. We always say that they're universal. What that means is that at any unique state of, you know, our, for our customers, at any point where they're digitizing, we can apply the, you know, the UOC. You know, if you were to speak to our customers, you know, three months ago, they were seeking technologies to chase new markets or expand. And today what they're trying to achieve is efficient remote control with, you know, reduced staff. So the UOC can be applied to any point along whatever your journey is. We can begin with maybe, you know, common remote visualization and then move into predictive, you know, into integrating for predictive maintenance and predictive analytics, or maybe focus on your asset management system and help streamline those workflows for generating work orders. Or simply you want to start off by converging your multiple different existing SCADA systems, of course, leaving them in place, not requiring a rip and replace, leaving them in place, but converging that all those different sites into, you know, one, you know, cohesive converged system. You know, a lot of the times that what you see is that with other technologies, they want to start with the customer getting all their data already into the cloud or some consolidated storage, you know, first, but that's not where many of our customers are at, you know, yet they're not at that point where everything is converged into one or a couple different data silos, right? So, you know, we don't require that. Of course, 
you know, for 30 years now, we're hardware agnostic, right? We're not built for, you know, any particular vendor's PLC or any particular vendor's instrument or piece of equipment, but also to we're software agnostic as well. So with our regards to our capabilities to connect and control, we are not proprietary to any particular vendor's hardware, nor any particular specific software system, database, or cloud provider. This means that we do not force our customers to rip and replace their existing systems, physical or software infrastructure, just to implement you know, a common command control room or a unified operations center. Um, just some of the key you know, uh, key, you know, key value propositions here for UOC areas of improvement. Of course, you know, what's the point of, you know, putting in a UOC and bringing in the system of systems approach, you know, improve your efficiency, save, you know, precious commodities, whether or not that they, that be electricity, water, or manpower, you know, better utilize this, you know, the hardware and equipment and instruments that you have in place provide a platform so that you can implement predictive, you know, diagnostics on maybe say rotating equipment, overall, you know, improve, you know, customer satisfaction, because at the end of the day, for profit or not, you know, everyone has a customer, and then the ability to improve, you know, operator training, and some of the things that the UOC can has uh, improvement areas on. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to go through a couple different videos and say, give some examples of some unified operation centers that were either delivered by us or by our partners. And just a demonstration of, you know, what it looks like when you use our technology platform, you know, to converge systems together. And again, converging IT and OT systems and several different sites or several different package systems together. So for this first one, we have uh, for smart cities, we have the UOC for Naya or Nava Rapur. It's India's first green sealed smart city. And in addition to the systems, you know, I mentioned, you know, in general, they also integrated the city help desk system. So water, wastewater, public utilities, city help desk system, um, remote, you know, street lighting systems and traffic control systems. They were highly motivated by the common drivers for most cities, which is, of course, to ensure citizen quality of life provide more reliable public services and ensure citizen safety. You know, they're trying to boost their infrastructure to attract businesses, but they also if faced extreme weather conditions from droughts and monsoons, which affected their water supplies, transportation, and even power supply. And for these reasons, the local urban planning agency for this region pursued a citywide digital infrastructure for monitoring control as a way to integrate so that they would reduce the burden of its limited staff. And just uh, in closing for Naya Rapur, moving forward, they are now in their RFP stage to integrate an additional entire sister city into the same city that you see there into the same control room. And so expanding upon their UOC into neighboring cities as well. This is one that you probably have seen, all of you have seen before. You know, but this is, you know, before it was called UOC, you know, this was a, this is a UOC. This is the Barcelona International Airport in Spain. And, and this is a demonstration of our software's core capability and a demonstration of our longstanding expertise in proven technology. After the owning transportation agency, IANA implemented the UOC in Barcelona, they went on to move forward to roll it out as a standardized solution towards the remaining 47 airports in the country. And in their own words, they wanted to transform themselves into the essential European premier airport hub in, in Europe. So they developed an integrated and centralized control platform to accommodate the expansion of the airport, which ended up tripling in size. And they really wanted to ensure to have a new platform that would be able to be re replicable and reusable across all of their sites or all of their airports. And they really needed to find a way to integrate and manage and optimize processes and systems coming from, again, multiple different vendors. Uh, this is a UOC for building management systems. Let's see if it can get started here. Oh, it's not running. One second. Okay, I, for some reason that video didn't play, sorry about that. Uh, so we'll skip that one for now, but we'll move on and then 
see if it can get it back going again. This is a Keppel Data Centers. It's a co-locator based in Singapore. We're hotly pursuing a unified operations center for data centers, especially for co-locators who sell their data center infrastructure to tenants, and also for internet giants who construct and own their own uh, data centers. We're strategically partnering, of course, with Schneider Electric in this market, and we can scale. This is just a demonstration of how we can scale the UOC solution from a single site to a multi-site implementation. At a single site, we converge the systems which support the white space and the gray space. So all the things that support the server, all the, everything in the server room, and then all the infrastructure which supports the server rooms. And we converge the data together from these specialized software solutions for power monitoring, control, and DSIM server rack software. Again, to ensure that the data center achieves you know, their service level agreements for uptime and cooling requirements. For a campus or multiple data centers or a distributed multi-site implementation, we converge multiple sites into an enterprise-wide monitoring solution, you know, adding features and functionality along the way for asset performance management, you know, in the way of condition-based monitoring, predictive analytics, and again, integrate you know, workflow and standard operating procedure assurance. And for the last video, again, apologies that the building video didn't run. Um, but for the last video here, many of you have also seen that if you had seen this, if you attended our conference, this last UOC reference is the Department of Water for Gwinnett County in Georgia, their vision to be the utility of the future. And with this first phase of their unified operations center, they took on a service, true service transformation. They focused on optimized performance, operational excellence, and of course, reliability for water distribution. Operational excellence for them included targeted data sharing with external city organizations. So they shared operational information such as the water collections data with the county's emergency operations control, <laughs> operations control center so that in turn they can monitor and respond to the impact of extreme weather, natural disasters, or basically any other rapid response scenario. And in another example of targeted data sharing, they exchanged data with the county fire department to help ensure their residents and businesses were not affected during a fire flow situation when the fire hydrants were being tapped. In the next phase, their priority is to further build upon and expand this unified operation center and provide visibility across engineering, maintenance, and also their laboratory data systems as well.